I've had lots of messages asking me, um, what do you do if online meetings go wrong? What can you do if the meeting goes wrong? And I think the, this applies particularly to important meetings. So, for example, when you're in front of a client or a prospective client in a sales environment, or maybe at an internal uh, kind of uh, meeting where your reputation really matters or you're trying to get buy-in for something important. So with my trusty timer, here it is, um, in just under four minutes, I'm going to try and give you a few ideas. But I'm going to split this up across two videos because I think there are really two separate things that you can do uh, to, to either reduce this problem or eliminate it altogether. So the first thing that you can do is all around the, the preparation and the prevention in the first place. And really, this is where you want to solve most of the problems because it's much easier to, to solve these problems in advance. And a great way of doing this is to uh, really focus on the four ways in which you are connecting with the world. And those four ways are your computer, so your laptop uh, or your computer, um, your internet connection, your video and your microphone. Those are four separate ways in which you're connecting to the world. They come together to create this, this virtual experience. Now, once you're clear on what those four things are, you can immediately create a mini checklist for yourself and say, OK, is there anything I need to do to make this uh, better for me? So in, in other words, with your computer, do you need to update the software? Do you need to check that you know how the meeting software works really well? Do you need to give yourself 10 minutes of tinkering so that you know which buttons to press in which order to make sure that the meeting goes well? Do you need the evening before or the morning of an important meeting? Do you need, again, just to check that the software hasn't updated itself, hasn't introduced new features that are going to throw you in the meeting? I've made this mistake again and again and again and again, just not being ready enough with the software itself, and particularly with updates, because they can really change everything. So that's one thing you can do. In terms of your internet connection, of course, you can be hardwired, uh, uh, as they as they say, the, <laughs> the experts. Um, and that, of course, means sticking a, a cable into your computer, your laptop, so that you're not just relying on an internet connection. That can give you a bit more stability and make you feel a bit more confident yourself. Then, of course, there's the, the, the video, um, the camera, so the, the thing I'm speaking into right now. Is that as good as it can be? Is there anything you need to do in terms of position? Um, is there anything that you need to think about in terms of what would happen if my, if my camera failed? Could I keep going? And just checking that will help you uh, to be a bit more prepared. And then lastly, of course, there's your microphone. What would I do if the microphone failed? If people suddenly couldn't hear me? If you get that dreaded message in the meeting, we can't hear you. Um, and, you're, and you're not on mute. What will you do in that instance? You know, do you need to prepare some extra slides? Do you need to prepare a message to show people during the meeting? So running through that quick checklist of four things will help you to be more prepared for, for things going wrong. And then there are a few things you can do in terms of the setup of the meeting itself. A couple of things I strongly recommend. One is set up a separate communication channel outside of the meeting. So, for example, you can have a WhatsApp group with a couple of other people in the meeting, or you can have an email channel with other people in the meeting, so that if everything goes wrong, you can at least let them know what you're doing to either get back into the meeting or to reschedule or whatever, and you're not just sitting there drenched in sweat in, <laughs> in front of your, your laptop. And then the other thing you can do, and I do this with all of my meetings, is dial in twice using a different bit of technology and a different internet connection. So, for example, if you're dialed into a meeting on your laptop, well, then also dial in as yourself again, but on your mobile phone or your iPad or your tablet, if you're unfortunate enough to be out of the Apple e ecosystem. Um, but dial in on that using the mobile phone connection so that if all goes wrong with your main way of connecting, you can jump to the second way of connecting as well. All right, that's just under four minutes. Tune in next time for what to do in the meeting itself.